All right then, gang, so we saw that in the last lesson, Bulma strips out a lot of the default browser styles for text, the font size, the font family, the font weight, the text decoration, etc. And instead, what we do is just use Bulma classes to apply different font styles to different elements. So if we go back over to the text editor, you can see already I've added in a load of different tags an H1 through to H4, some paragraph tags, some more headings, and then down here, some paragraph tags as well. So if I was to save this now, we're gonna see all of these in the browser, but they all look like they're essentially the same tag, like paragraph tags or something, right? All of them are styled the same way. And again, Bulma does that on purpose. It strips out all of those default browser styles so that we can just apply different classes to them to style them differently. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the different font sizes available to us. So the way I apply a font size to different elements is by giving it a class. So let's say class is equal to, and then we say is, and most Bulma classes start with either is or has, and then something else, right? And to do font size, it's is, and then hyphen size, and then hyphen a number, and the number runs from one to seven. Now, if it's number one, then it's gonna be a large font size, and we can see that over here. So that's a bit like an H1, right? And then if it's gonna be something like seven, which will apply to the bottom one over here, class is equal to is size hyphen seven, save that, then it's gonna be quite small. You can see that right here, it's smaller than the default size. So we can have any number through one to seven. So let me do over here, class is equal to is size hyphen two. And then below that, I'll do class is equal to is hyphen size hyphen three and press save. Then we can see them gradually get smaller, a bit like an eyesight chart, right? Okay, so we can also apply these different classes to other things like paragraph tags. They don't have to be just headers. So I could say class is equal to, and then we'll say is size hyphen four. Save that, and we can see that over here, this is the paragraph tag and it's a bit bigger than the rest of them, all right? Okay, so there's also classes to style the font style and the font weight, so let's take a look at some of those. So on the same paragraph tag, I'm gonna say is hyphen uppercase and press save. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, turns it all uppercase. And then after that, we'll say is hyphen italic, save that. And surprise, surprise, it's italic. So you can see the pattern. Most of these classes are starting with is, well, all of them at the minute, but some of them do start with something else, has. So for example, if we want to use font weight, then we can do that. I'm gonna come down here and say class is equal to has, and then hyphen text, hyphen weight, and then hyphen bold. So I can do the same thing, but light as well. Let me grab that and paste it down here and change bold to light. If I save that, we should see a bold paragraph tag and also a light one. So that's to change the font weight. And also let me just do another font style because I missed one out. Let me come here and say class is equal to is hyphen lowercase. So much like we can have uppercase, we can also have lowercase as well. So hopefully we won't see a capital H. Save that, and which one is it? It's around here somewhere. Nope, can't see it, have I saved it? Is lower, oops, I've spelt it wrong, lowercase. Save it, and there it is right here, all right? So they're the different kinds of styles we can apply to change the font size the font style and the font weight. Now there's two other classes I want to show you when it comes to changing the size and the weight, etc. And they're simple ones and they don't start with is or has, but the first one is called title. So if I save that, we can see right here, it applies some font weight of bold and a slightly larger font size as well, all in one go. So it's like a shortcut instead of manually typing out some of these different classes together. And we also have one called subtitle. So class is equal to subtitle and save that. And we can see the same applies to that. It's a bit smaller though, and not quite as bold. So sometimes I use these classes if I just wanna create quick titles but if I want more granular control over the font size or the font weight, etc., I would use the classes separately. Now we can also align text to the left or the right to the center using some classes as well. So if for example, I want to align this to the center, then I can use a class called has hyphen text 
hyphen, and then centered. And by the way, I do not expect you to remember all of these different classes. That would be a complete waste of time. I don't remember them all. And if I need to find a class, then I just go to the Bulma docs. It's a complete waste of my headspace to remember classes like this, considering that I use many different frameworks as well. So definitely don't try to remember them. Just refer to the documentation if you need a specific class. And over time, the ones that you use more often will just be committed to your memory without even trying. So anyway, if we save this, we're going to see the text centered in the middle. If you want to align it to the right, we can say has text hyphen right. Save that and refresh. We can see over here. And if you want it to the left, then this would be left instead. But by default, it's already left. So in this case, we don't need to do that. I'll leave it as right like that. OK, so that is text alignment. Next up is colors. So by default, all of the text when we use Bulma is this kind of dark gray, but you can change it using Bulma classes and it follows the same kind of convention as this. It starts with has. So if I come down to these paragraph tags down here, I'm going to say class is equal to and then we'll say has hyphen text and then hyphen some kind of color keyword. So we can use various different keywords. We have primary, warning, danger, info, success, dark, light, a couple of others, I think, as well. Let's just take a look at a few of them. So I'm going to say has text primary, and this is like a primary theme color. If I save that, it should be a greeny color. So we can see this is a bit green. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right. So this right here is the primary color. We can also use one. So class is equal to has text warning. And that is going to be kind of like a yellowy color right here. And next up, let's do danger. So class is equal to has hyphen text hyphen danger. Save that. And this should be ready. Yep. And then next up, let's do info. Class is equal to has hyphen text hyphen info. And I tell you what, instead of previewing these one at a time, let's do all of them and then preview them at the end together. So this time we'll say has text hyphen success. And then let's do down here. Class is equal to has hyphen text hyphen dark. And then finally we'll do light. Class is equal to has hyphen text hyphen light. Okay, save that and preview all of these. So we can see info is this blue color, success, a different shade of green and dark and then light text, which we can't really see. So they're the different text colors we can use. We can also change these to make them lighter or darker. So for example, if I wanted to make this lighter, I could. I could come to this one over here and add on at the end light, save that and it should look like a pink color now instead that you can barely see, but it is lighter. If I wanted to make it dark instead, I could do save that and now it's a dark red. And the same is true for others as well. I could add on light or dark here to get different variations of those colors. All right. Now, as well as all of this, we can change the background color of things. So I could say, for example, has background this time and then hyphen whatever keyword we want to use. So I could say, for example, light. So we have has text light and now has background light. If I save this, then we see now a light gray background. OK, so next up, let's do down here has hyphen background hyphen danger and save that. And again, we can change these by adding, for example, light or dark. So I could say light and it's a pinky background or dark. And it's a dark maroon background instead. Is that correct? Yep. OK, so let's do another one. If we go down here to the bottom, I'm going to say has background hyphen primary and then I'll say hyphen dark as well. Save that and this one should be dark green at the bottom. So there's lots more variations of the colors we can use as well. You can find them all on the documentation. Remember the link to that is down below, but just a quick look, we can scroll down and see all of the different variations we can use. So there is quite a lot of colors in the Bulma palette and we're going to be using more of them as we go forward.